last thing Joe said before she sat down was um, about <coughs> catalyzing. What's my what's my presentation called? Yeah. Catalyzing well, my Well, I It was accidental. <laughs> um, I chose that word because for me, the learning that I've taken from COVID and the work of the community care hubs and the community anchors is about the incredible strength that communities bring to changing things on the ground. But I don't think that communities can do it alone. I think what's important is having the relationships and the organisations in a city like Leeds working together in different ways with different strengths that wrap around those communities and enable them to really make a difference. And I think that the two reports I'm going to speak about today, I've kind of dumped my, I've done my presentation already, haven't I? <laughs> I think the two reports I'm going to speak about today kind of show that. It's not without problems. Joe reflected on some of those before, you know, particularly acting at, at speed and pace, creating new relationships where relationships didn't exist before. It needs a constant negotiation. And actually, if we learn something from the difficult finding in, in, in Hope's work, that some of our organisations were not always as inclusive as we would hope. I think one of the things we need to think about is how do we wrap around those organisations? How do organisations like mine, the City's Council for Voluntary Service, wrap around those organisations? But how do we all do that so the communities and make the difference that they need to make. I might just, I can stop now, I think. <laughs> okay, bit of context. You won't find this in either of the reports that I'm going to talk about, and there's a reason for that, because the kind of the reports I'm talking about today are really about <coughs> organisational relationships. You know, they're about how organisations change through COVID, how they're changing into the future. But I think it's important to give you this context. So, Around the, start of the co uh, around the start of the uh, pandemic, the, um, a group of organisations were brought together, l largely top down, if I'm being honest, and the council um, and, and councillors around the city and organisations around the city kind of thought, who is low in the working with our contraction leads? Thought, who are the organisations in the neighbourhood that can hold the space? But that was top down, and that's not in itself <coughs> perfect. I would say over two years that relationship changed, it became more bottom up. But they came together to deliver emergency relief and just the headlines, those organisations delivered over a quarter of a million food parcels. They made over half a million befriending calls, which for me is just the incredible power of doing things locally. And I think it really was a step change in our city partnership. And actually the conversation I was having earlier with uh, colleagues from St. Roger's Pips and St. Anne's about the partnership around homelessness is the same. Actually we brought people together in different <coughs> ways. The council worked as a fantastic enabler to, to encourage those relationships and then actually in a lot of cases stepped back and said we can trust you as local communities to make the difference. And I think that was different. A light to that, the point that John was making earlier on my table, unbelievable change in social action in the city. People stepped forward and for Val, that was 4,500 volunteers, came forward in about a week to um, go through our, um, our profile for volunteering. Uh, you know, we set up a new system and I'll be honest, at one point, and, and I hope we put the reports in this in the report, the system fell over. We didn't deploy all of those volunteers, but that's because of the incredible response of our city. And lots of those people did go on to do different things, self-actualised, self-organised in their communities. Okay, I want to talk a little bit about where we sit now, because for me, that's the purpose of research. I'm not a pure researcher, I'm, about, I'm a social policy guy, I'm about how do we apply research for the future. 
And this is where we sit at the moment. And this is why I was grumpy when I came in this morning. We know that, and you've all said it this morning, that the need in communities is rising. We have gone from one crisis into another. And actually, again, speaking to colleagues, it came up on my table, I know it's kind of elsewhere, people that volunteer, people that work with communities are exhausted. Doesn't look like, and Joe said this as well, it doesn't look like central government is going to step in this time. And weirdly, it's, it's both a hidden crisis coming and one that's happening in public. You, COVID was so, we were all behind closed doors, but it was the most public crisis you can possibly imagine. This one is creeping up on us and it has changed things. There's less money, it's more hidden and more public and it's slower which I think means that we all, as a city, need to work more closely, double down on those partnerships, double down on those relationships, because it's going to be, if anything else, I think, a little bit harder. I feel like I've spent more time than I should have done before I got to the main meeting for the thing. So I'm going to talk about two reports, and I'm just going to draw, draw out some kind of what feel like key themes for me. The first one on the left there, looking specifically at the Community Care Hub network and specifically at how relationships in community care hubs, and there were about 33 of them across the two years of the, of, the, of, the, of, the, of the pandemic, they changed over time. So looking at how they related to the organisations around them, how they related to the council and other statutory partners. And that piece of work was delivered independently by Hope Backman, um, with support, with financial support from, um, from the university, the Social Sciences Institute, um, and steered by Leeds Act, which is a project that lives, I suppose, within VAL, but is independent of VAL. And we were really keen to get that independent view. And then, looking into the future, a report that we self-produced within our research and evaluation service, looking at the community anchor model, and I'll say a bit more about that in a minute. Okay, what did we learn from having conversations, from Hope having conversations with eight of the 33 organisations um, in, the, in the Hub network? Well, I think the most important one, it's fairly obvious, but I think it's really important, is that doing that work made the people within Hubs feel that they were closer to communities. These were community-focused organisations already, but doing the work meant they had different conversations. Meant, as you've all said, that actually some of that hidden need came to the fore. And, and, and people were shocked and surprised, and yes, on occasion, joyful. Um, in some cases, and I have to say in some cases, hubs started to create new relationships with people in their neighbourhood. And in some cases, they changed how they thought as organisations. But that does come with a massive caveat. Because lots of those hubs didn't see themselves as, as, as community hubs, community focused for the long term. They saw themselves as organisations making a time-limited intervention to support their communities in a time of crisis. Lots of them were overwhelmed and just said, we can do the food parcels, we can do the befriending, but we don't have the time and the energy to, didn't have the time and the energy to make those new relations that we really want to have. So it, it's a mixed picture, but I do, I, I, I'm, I'm choosing to focus on those organisations that said, actually this changed who we were. Some things that we really need to learn about for the future, and I think this particularly applies to, so Val's role uh, within the Community Hub, Care Hub Network was, I suppose, holding a space, convening those relationships, you know, and actually to some extent being a communicator between our statutory partners and the council and the health and those local organisations delivery. So a lot of this learning, honestly, is from VAL and organisations like VAL. Hubs told us that it was really particularly, that it was really hard for them to understand how long they were in it for. 
So, and, and what was happening around them. That's inevitable, isn't it? it, was a, it, it we thought it was going to be 12 weeks and it was two years. But actually, sometimes hubs didn't know whether they were going to still be a hub in three months' time. And that was really difficult for them. And I think there's learning for us and there's learning for that, that, that all that, that whole partnership that wraps around doing local delivery to make that clear as far as we possibly can. Hubs weren't always sure what they were there for. They knew they were delivering, they knew they were delivering food parcels, they knew, knew they were delivering preferring. But actually, what, what else were they meant to do? And, and, and I think that it was very hard to have that conversation at a time of really you know, heightened emergency response. And this is the important one, I think, that doing this, and I think this worked well, but, do it, but, but having the relationships between organisations with different um, ways of working at different scales needs a constant negotiation and, and in some areas that negotiation was challenging um, and two areas I would, I would really focus on was the point that Joe made earlier around um, how we support volunteers and how we get the right training into volunteers and actually the other one is about how we wrap around a structure of support that enables organisations to do what they want, need to do. And particularly around food parcels, some organisations felt that the council's structure for, do, for, for referral really helped them to make decisions. Mm -hmm. But some found that, 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 that actually that referral system was in tension with their, with their values because actually they were saying, we just need to open up the doors and give food to anybody. And, so that, and I think it did work well, but that was a constant negotiation, and Val played a role in that negotiation. <laughs> okay, so if we think about clarity of purpose, if we think about negotiating roles, if we think about how we do this for the long term, one of the things that came out of, I think, community care hubs, but not exclusively, was this sense that actually local organisations have a really critical role to play and that they can't do things on their own. That actually what you need to do is have um, organisations around which a whole ecosystem of other organisations intersect. And, and, and a, vow, a vow or rather among that network, they call themselves community anchors. So in effect that's an organisation who says, within my neighbourhood, hopefully negotiates not says, within, within my neighbourhood, I will take a lead, I'll be generous in trying to bring people in around me, and I'll do that in a certain way. So, around the end of the hub network period, although we're, not, we're still not out of doing emergency relief, people were saying, where do we go? And we started to have a conversation with some of those organisations. And we commissioned the internal research to understand what would an anchor network really look like. So, just a very quick thing. Where, this is where we are now. We've got 19 anchors who said they want to do this role. 12, I've called them close supporters. I don't think we have a term for them, but organisations that, you know, have, you know, are playing the kind of formal anchor role but really want to be involved, covering 24 of the city's 33 wards. Oops. Sorry, Richard, is that 19 plus 12, or is it 19. That, it's 12 out of 19? It's 19. It's, it's 19 plus 12. Thanks. 19 is like the plan for the 24 awards. The additional 12 are deliverers, quite a lot of them that have some support from maybe in different wards as well. So when you combine those two numbers, it more or less covers the system that everybody's signed up as a community. Yeah. I, I, so, I'm, I'm aware that I'm over time, so I will go as quickly as I can. So, um, the, the research, this is what, the, what, what he's told us. Uh, and really, this is again, after talking to anchors about what were the principles that, that, that they would want to see themselves and other organisations like them apply it. And they said they want, to be, they want to be a gateway, not a gatekeeper. So, their values need to be about opening the conversation not setting, setting 
um, constraints. It's about holding a space. It's about being, being, being a place where people can, organisations in particular, can come together and learn from each other. They want to start from the assets in communities. So they want to understand what do people want, what, what, what have they got to give, what do they want to give, and what other things can help to support community change. They want to be generous. And that really means, actually, a lot of this, now let's talk about money. I wasn't planning to talk about money, but let's talk about money. What I think generous means, down when it comes down to the brass tacks of money, is let's start, let's start, when money is available, let's start a conversation about what is needed in the context of those community assets and think about who in our neighbourhood is best placed to act in partnership to deliver rather than thinking, there's money, let's go and get it. Mm. And, and, and that comes through really clearly in the conversations that now the anchors are having. They want to be locally led and impactful across the city. So that's about <coughs> start from hyper-local, from your neighbourhood, but actually find a way of bringing together voice and making that change policy at a city level. And I was talking to someone else in the room this morning about something that was happening in Seacroft around the Anchor Network, and they're doing it now. They are having these conversations in communities so they can pull together the messages about, this is what it feels for us, two minutes, and, and this is what needs to change. Okay, I've got one more point I wanted to make. Consistency and purpose and values. This is one where I'm not so it's about seeing all those things as central to where we go and also I think a fair area of work to do is making sure that those anchors remain inclusive so that they, and in particular one thing that came through our piece of research was that related to what Joe was saying earlier, you need to make sure that those anchors are inclusive of all voices because some voices are often less heard. Okay, I'm not going to talk very much about this because I know I'm over time. So, it feels like we're back in the crisis. So the conversation about the anchors was about how are we going to build a response, you know, a really uh, an asset-based way for the future, but actually we're back to top down and we're talking about delivering emergency response to the household support fund and the point that Dave was making earlier, the anchors are really active in trying to uh, bring together the conversation about warm spaces and, and encourage people to make sure that, that we've got good coverage in every neighbourhood. But for the medium term, actually it's about having the conversations in the neighbourhood about what does change for the, for the long term look like and then frankly seeking the money to do that in an inclusive way and doing that generously. Thank you.